Hey book friends. So I'm going to be doing something new on this channel that I am really pretty excited about. I want to be able to bring you into kind of my reading as it's happening, like an at the moment snapshot of what's going on. Like what am I really liking about the books I'm reading? And it's not just so much my thoughts of a book after I've finished it, like wrapped it all up and thought about how to explain my thoughts to you guys. It's more off the cuff. And I really wanted to figure out a way to do that. So here's what I'm gonna do. On weeks that I don't already have kind of a video planned for Friday, I'm gonna do a Friday reads where I just take you through what I'm reading and if I'm liking it, if I'm not liking it, what am I not liking about it? So that's my plan. So I'm gonna try this out. I really like watching other people who do this where it's kind of like an informal chat about what I'm reading. So with all that, information up front. Let's actually just get into what I am reading. So hey friends, my name is Angie. If you are new here, welcome. And like I said, this is going to be pretty informal. So let's just jump into what I'm reading. I'm going to cover both kind of what I'm physically reading as well as what I'm listening to. So the first book I want to talk about is this book. So it's The House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass, and it's part of the Crescent City series, I think that's what it's called. And this is just book one, and I believe book two comes out next month. And so I really wanted to give Sarah J. Mass a try. On book two, people either love her or think she's kind of trashy, so I am i was just not sure. And honestly, I'm really enjoying it. I think it's a really fun book. I believe this is her only adult fantasy book. A lot of her other works are young adult fantasy. And so this is definitely a fantasy book. It's about this city, Crescent City, and, and there's a main character of Bryce who is half human, half fae. She is involved in a lot of the different operations of the city. Like she has friends in high places. And then early in the book, there's this like brutal murder that just shakes her because it's very much connected to her, but also really unnerves the city and all the higher ups. And I haven't mentioned yet some of the creatures, I guess, in this book are angels. So the archangel Micah actually runs the whole city. There are people above him, but they're not really in the city. He's kind of the main person in the city. And then the city is divided into seven different sections based on the different types of creatures that live there, if they be they humans or wolves or fae or whatever. So that's kind of the makeup of the city. But, but then two years passes before there's another similar murder. And then she gets roped in to help investigate these murders because she has some connections there. So there's a reason she's pulled into it and she gets a helper who is a fallen angel named Hunt. So I am almost halfway, I would say. It's a pretty big book, but I have been loving it. I've been loving the pace. It is a very fast read. So the last fantasy book I read, I read the Mistborn trilogy. I just finished it up. I talked about it in my December wrap up. I loved it. That's a Brandon Sanderson book. And honestly, I don't think you could get much more different in the fantasy genre than Sarah J. Mass and Brandon Sanderson. But then again, I've only dipped my toes into fantasy. But I would say what I'm liking about this is it's very fast paced in the writing style. Like things are definitely happening kind of often enough. And there's also a number of different kind of reveals about the world and about the people involved that are just interesting. And you know, some of it is definitely setting the foundation for this series in this city as well because I believe there will be four books. I'm honestly not sure but there's four different houses. So like the house of earth and blood is like the human, the witches, the shifters, the normal animals. So that's like one house and then there's other houses that have like the angels and then vampires and you get the drift. But anyway I think all the books are going to be the different houses. So this is definitely setting some of that stage of just kind of the city which I'm enjoying. It's not a, like a big information dump if you will like there is a lot of action but there's also a lot of information kind of given throughout that is intriguing especially when it comes to the main character and so i'm liking this i'm reading it faster than i was expecting like i'm actually looking forward to picking it up every night like sometimes i'm reading books that are a little heavier like say they're like a historical fiction book and i'm enjoying it thoroughly but sometimes i'm not like eager to pick it up if that makes sense but this book i have been like let's get the kids to bed early because that's usually when i read as i read after the kids go to bed so i'm trying to convince my husband that it's like we need to get them to bed early so that i can have extra time to read this book it's very silly but i have just been really enjoying it 
and I'm excited to get to the end, which I probably um, will shortly. So anyway, I've been really liking this book. The other book that I have picked up has been part of a buddy read on Jacqueline. I'll link her channel down below, but her Patreon has a monthly buddy read, and this month we picked this book. It's called The Cabin by Jacinda Wilder and it is not exactly what I expected. So I'm about a hundred pages in, I think, so like a third of the way through the book. It's not that long of a book. It's about this woman whose husband dies of terminal cancer, and one year later, he sends her something in the mail, like one year after he dies. I'm not sure where that goes yet because I am only in the first chunk of the book, which has a lot to do with him dying. So that's not a spoiler, that's what the book's about. But I wasn't really expecting that. There's two things I wasn't expecting with this book that's making me a little bit like not loving it. So one, it's a romance book. I didn't realize it was a romance book. I thought it was more of like a contemporary book that dealt with the deep emotion of grief and loss. But it's very much of a romance book. There's some times where it was like there's like five pages straight of like sexy time and I don't love that in books I tend to skim over it I found that as long as it's not like a main plot point it's not like it ruins a book for me by any means it doesn't I just didn't realize this was like romance plus grief I thought it was just really all about her grief about her husband so that's part one that I just I don't know I'm not loving Actually, there's three things. <laughs> the second thing I'm not loving is I'm not really loving the writing. I think it's a little bit stilted. I don't like the dialogue. I don't think it's very realistic. Sometimes the way they're talking to each other is just kind of bugging me. And maybe it's just that I don't read a lot of romance. So that's fair. And then the third thing that is almost making me wonder if I'm just going to put this book down is the depiction of him dying. I knew it was about him dying, but I thought the book was after he had died and her processing that grief. So the writing is good enough that I feel like I can feel all her emotions, but I mean, I'm human enough to like put myself in her shoes and be like, how would I feel if this happened to my husband? And it's just hard. And I'm not sure if I really want to do that right now. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep reading this in all honesty. I might give it another like 20 pages and then I might just put it down. I mean, I've already invested 100 pages and I usually finish all my books. I don't really DNF, but I'm thinking about DNFing for those three reasons. I don't want to read a romance, the writing's so-so, but mainly I just don't know if I want to walk through losing a husband, if that makes sense. So I'm not sure, I'm not loving it. That's where I'm at with that book. But I also do have an audiobook going. And it's a good audiobook. So I am reading or listening, whatever you want to call it, listening to Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. Let me check my phone. I can't remember how far I got, but I definitely think I'm over, yeah, I'm over 50%. I'm at 59% on this book. And it's been good. I definitely am liking the story. I am liking the fact that there are a lot of like breadcrumbs and loose ends in this woman's story that is very interesting. So this is about a woman who's in a coma. There are a lot of her secrets. There's a lot of secrets by other people in her life, like her husband, her sister. And so far this book has been kind of traveling between three different timelines. So the current present day timeline of her being in a coma. And it's told in the way that she can hear what's going on around her, but she can't move or respond or anything like that. So she's in a coma, but she can understand kind of what's going on and you have her thoughts on what's going on. So that's like present day. And then there's like present day minus two weeks or whatever to kind of lead up to what puts her in the coma, which we don't know as the reader and she doesn't know as the coma patient, she doesn't know what happened. And so there's that like two weeks prior. And then there's like when she was like 13 years old. So to set some backstory on her life and what kind of person she is, it tells a bit of her like 12 year old self. And so I do like that. I like the that setup. I like that it's giving us information, bits and pieces of information as we go. I'd say the only thing I'm not loving about it is just her character. You know, there are some books where you, especially when I listen to it, where somebody's thoughts and her her words just are irritating to me her her way of looking at the world is just like i don't really want those thoughts in my head i don't want to think about things that way like 
I don't see things that way and she has kind of an irritating monologue, if that makes sense. So that is the part I'm not loving. It's kind of like there's some other books like that. Girl on a Train. I started that book, I couldn't finish it. I mean, that had more because of her alcoholism, but I just didn't like her voice in my head that I just put that book down. Another one is like Woman in the Window. Although I finished that and ended up really liking it, but it had a similar thing where I was just like irritated by her point of view and her thoughts. And that's how I feel about the main character in this book. But it's interesting enough for me that I am wanting to know, one, what happened, what happened in the accident, but what are all these other things that happened? Like what are the things that, that they're talking around that happened during her childhood? What is some of the things that happened in that like two weeks prior to her accident? It sounds really shady, like some of the things that are going on. And it's like, I feel like I'm having one thought, but I feel like the author is trying to have me have that thought and it's gonna be something totally different. That's how I feel about this book, which is intriguing enough to me in a thriller to want to keep reading because I want to know why I'm being misdirected to something when it's something else, but I'm not quite sure what that something else is and I'm not really in a position to guess at this point at 59% through the book. And I will be finishing this soon, I'm sure, because after I finish filming, I'm going to go clean the house and I usually listen to audiobooks when I'm cleaning. So that's this book. So I'm liking it, not loving it. It's probably more, currently it's a three star read, I would say, just because of the, the voice, but I'm liking it. Where this one is more of a like two star at this point. This one is a five star. I'm just loving this. So this is the one I want to read and these ones I'm not loving as much. But as for what I'm gonna pick up next, so, cause I'm clearly gonna be finishing this one soon, but I do have another audiobook set up and ready for me. And that's this one. So I already have this uploaded on my Libby app. And so I'm gonna get to this next. And so this is the time hopping book about this woman who kind of lives her life out of order. Every January 1st, she wakes up in a different time of her life. So it sounds fun, it sounds interesting. So Ona Out of Order is the next audiobook I will be picking up. So as for what to read physically, I feel like it depends if I really do truly put down the cabin and just DNF it. If I do, then the next book I want to pick up, I'm feeling kind of more historical fiction because none of this has been historical fiction. I did read Lilac Girls at the beginning of January and that was excellent, excellent book. Oh my gosh, so wait for my wrap up on my thoughts and feelings about that because I really enjoyed it. But I have another historical fiction that I got out of the library and it's a new release so I either have to read it or give it back sort of situation. So this is I think what I will pick up if I end up putting down the cabin. So, and that is this book, Matrix by Lauren Groff. So this is a historical fiction from kind of the medieval times and it focuses on a woman as she goes to this nunnery to kind of run it and protect it, I believe. So she's kind of like almost a woman warrior is what it sounds like and I heard great things about this and it is fairly short so that's my next book I think I will be picking up depending on how I get on with the rest of the cabin. So anyway, that's a little snapshot as to where I'm at with my books and what I'm liking. I'm finding January to be a good reading month. Like I'm enjoying it. Like I'm really finding the time to read. So that is my little update, little Friday reads, if you will. So I hope you enjoyed this and let me know down below. Do you like Friday reads? Do you like this kind of format of a real informal like check-in on where I am reading because I can't give spoilers obviously because I would love to give some spoilers on this book but let me know down below if you like this format and yeah we'll see what I do going forward that's what I have for this video give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe if you want to otherwise I'll see you in the next book video okay guys take care bye